Hello learners, welcome to this course on Embedded System Design Using AT89C5 on Microcontroller. In this tutorial, I will be discussing about on how to interface a stepper motor with AT89C5 on Microcontroller. A stepper motor which translates electrical pulses into mechanical movement. So when we apply a voltage or current to a stepper motor, it converts this electrical signal into a mechanical movement and this mechanical movement will be in terms of small incrementation so it is not going to be a continuous rotation it is going to be in terms of small incrementation of spatial position so it is made up of a brushless dc electric motor which divides the full rotation so full rotation in the sense 360 degrees it divides the three full rotation into number of equal steps so it is going to have a uniform step and it is going to do a full rotation which is nothing but 360 degrees so the applications where the stepper motor is used in terms of disk drives dot matrix printers robotics if we see the construction of a stepper motor so here i show a typical stepper motor so which has the stator windings and there is a center part which is your rotor so the shaft the shaft is a permanent magnet rotor which is surrounded by four or more stator windings so usually we will have the permanent magnet rotor at the center which is a movable one and we will have the stator windings around the permanent magnet rotor so this coil a b c d are nothing but your state are windings so we can have four in number or more than four in number so usually the state are windings are center tab so center tab in the sense we have four coils one lead of the coils are left free whereas the other leads are connected and it is taken as a common terminal and this common terminal will be used for supplying the appropriate voltage or current to the motor. So there are different types of uh, motors, unipolar, universal and bipolar motor. So here this type of configuration where I have on one side individual coils and the other side it is shorted and taken as a common terminal it is called as a four phase unipolar stepper motors so the main advantage of having this center tab is in the sense we can have the direction of current can be interchanged so the direction of current can be along this direction or it can be along this direction by changing the direction of current through the coil we can able to change the direction of rotation so that is one of the biggest advantage of this stepper motor and another important thing is the motor's position can be controlled without any sensor feedback whereas in case of a servo motor we need to have a position sensor and this position sensor value should be compared with the user input thereby the control signal will be applied to the motor in case of a servo motor to get a desired position whereas in case of a stepper motor there is no position sensor for feedback so it is completely a open loop controller based system so we have different configurations by which the stepper motor can operate so first i am going to talk about a single phase four step sequence so four step sequence in the sense in the full rotation 360 degrees i am going to take four steps so each step is going to be of 90 degrees so here we name the coil stator windings as A, B, A dash and B dash and there is a center part which is your movable rotor. So first what we do is we excite the coil A. So after exciting coil A, this coil A will produce a magnetic field. So our rotor will get aligned to that magnetic field. Next, in the next time step we will try to activate coil B. So coil B will produce a magnetic field. Now the rotor will change its position and it will get aligned to the magnetic field produced by B. Subsequently, we try to excite coil A dash and then B dash. So thereby the magnetic field will be induced. Depending upon the magnetic field, the rotor is going to make its movement. So thereby we get 90 degree 
step for each time step. So the control words required to make a clockwise movement is here I have shown in terms of a table. So A, B, A dash and B dash. So the coil will get excited when I give zero to the coil. The supply will be given directly to the common terminal of the stepper motor. So we need to give zero to the coil thereby the coil gets excited. So in a four step single phase sequence, first one is the coil A is excited. In the second time step coil B is excited. In the next time step A dash is excited and subsequent step we have B dash as excited. So this is the control word which I need to give to make the motor to rotate along clockwise direction. If I want to do an anti-clockwise direction, first I should excite A, then B dash, A dash and B. So that will generate the movement along anti-clockwise direction. So there is another sequence which is biphase four step sequence. So here in biphase what we do, we excite two coils at a time. So for first we have going to excite coil A and B. So A will produce a magnetic field, B will also produce a magnetic field and these two magnetic fields will induce a resultant magnetic field which will be along the diagonal. So our rotor will get aligned to the resultant magnetic field. Next we will excite coil B and A dash, same principle is applied, B will produce a magnetic field, A dash will produce a magnetic field and the resultant magnetic field will be at the center between your coil A dash and B. So our rotor will get aligned to that resultant magnetic field. Subsequently A dash and B dash and B dash and A. So thereby again I get 4 steps in 360 degree rotation. But now we are going to excite 2 coils at a time. So if we see the control word, first one is we are going to excite coil A and B, then B and A dash, then A dash and B dash and then finally B dash and A. So these are the control words which should be specified to your stepper motor for its rotation. And the next sequence which I am going to talk about is 8 sequence. Here I am going to have 8 steps which means each step angle is going to be of 45 degrees. So each step will take 45 degree movement. So here what we do, we first excite coil A. So our rotor will get aligned like this. Then we will excite 2 coils A and B. So now the resultant magnetic field will be at 45 degrees. So our rotor will get aligned to the 45 degrees. Next we will excite coil B alone. Then subsequently B and A dash, then A dash alone, then A dash and B dash, then B dash alone, then B dash and A. So thereby now in the full 360 degree rotation, I am going to get 8 steps. Each step is going to have a 45 degree movement. So the control word for getting 8 step sequences, first we will excite coil A alone, then A and B dash, then B alone. B and A dash, then A dash alone, then A dash and B dash, then B dash alone, then B dash and A. So this will provide the water to move along clockwise direction with 8 steps. If I want anti-clockwise direction, I have to excite the coil in a reverse manner. So if we see a step angle. So step angle is mainly determined by the internal construction of your motor. That is especially the number of teeth on the stator and the rotor. How many stator teeth and rotor teeth are there depending upon that our step angle is going to vary. So what is step angle? Step angle is nothing but the minimum degree of rotation associated with single step. In single step how much degree our motor is going to move. So that is nothing but your step angle. So we have a terminology called as excitation steps per revolution. So in order to get one step, how many excitation steps are required? So usually what happens is when I give four excitation steps, if I have a stator winding of four, if I give four excitation steps, then one step movement will happen in our motor. So the excitation steps per revolution is nothing but total number of excitation steps needed to rotate one complete rotation or 360 degrees. 
let us see this with an example if i take a four step biphase switching sequence so after four excitation steps meaning after exciting the four stator coils how much movement will be associated in the motor so after completing four excitation steps our rotor will move only one tooth pitch so after doing one cycle of excitation one rotor tooth pitch will move so if for example if i have rotor with 50 teeth then in order to complete one full 360 degree rotation for each teeth movement i require four excitation steps so to get a complete 360 degree rotation we need to give 200 excitation steps per revolution so we have 50 rotor teeth if 50 rotor teeth moves we will get 360 degree rotation for a rotor teeth to move one position we need to give four excitation steps so thereby altogether we require 200 excitation steps to complete one revolution that is 360 degrees so the minimum step angle is always a function of number of teeth on the rotor or in other words we can say that smaller the step angle the more teeth the rotor has to pass then how to determine the motor speed motor speed is measured in terms of steps per second so steps per second is given by rpm of the motor into steps per revolution by 60 so if i have 500 steps per revolution in 360 degrees i am going to have 500 steps which means the step angle will be 0 0.72 so which will be obtained by having 500 divided by 360 sorry it is 360 divided by 500 so in 360 degree rotation they are going to have 500 steps so that by you will get a step angle of 0 0.72 so there are three common types of stepper motor universal unipolar and bipolar so this combination can be identified by the number of connections from the motor so a universal stepper motor has eight leads or eight connections coming out of it whereas in unipolar we have six connections coming out of it bipolar we have four connections so a unipolar stepper motor so here i show a unipolar stepper motor which can be converted into a unipolar and bipolar this universal can be converted to unipolar and bipolar whereas an unipolar stepper motor it can be converted only to a bipolar from bipolar we can't convert it into a universal and unipolar if we see the connection diagram for four lead bipolar connection we have one wire with black green red and blue so there will be four leads coming out of the bipolar stepper motor in case of a unipolar six lead stepper motor we will have black green red and blue or the coil old uh, coil uh, wires and the common terminal are nothing but your yellow and white in case of a six lead bipolar connection Okay, if I want to convert a unipolar into bipolar, what we do? We remove that common connection. So the yellow and white leads are having no connection. Other four leads, we try to use it as a bipolar connection. In case of an eight lead unipolar, what we do? We interconnect the center terminals. Yellow and orange are interconnected to take a common. Same way, white and brown are interconnected to take the common terminal. In case of an 8 lead bipolar series, we need to just short your yellow and orange and here white and brown will be shorted together. In case of an 8 lead bipolar parallel connection, the black is connected to orange, yellow is connected to green. Here same way red is connected to brown, white is connected to blue. So thereby we get a bipolar parallel connection. Now let us look at how to interface a stepper motor with 889C51 microcontroller 
For this example, I am going to use micro C Pro for 8051 as an integrated development environment where we will be doing a embedded C program. So after writing an embedded C program, we will be converting it into a hexadecimal file. Then we will create our circuit in Proteus 8 professional environment. Then we dump that hexadecimal file onto this Proteus 8 professional. Then we will try to check whether our program is working or not. So here I show a typical block diagram representation. AT89C51 microcontroller. I am going to use port 3. Port 3 is a 8 bit port. In that I am going to use 4 leads. Port 3.0 to port 3.3. So we are going to use a driver called as ULN2003A driver. Which is a high voltage, high current Darlington transistor arrays. So when we want to give a higher rating voltage or current to a stepper motor, we need to sync that current using a microcontroller. So in order to sync such a high value of current, we make use of this ULN2003A. Because usually the microcontrollers will sync only about 15 milliampers or 25 milliampers of current. So high rated current cannot be synced in your microcontroller. In order to sync a high rating current, we are going to use ULN 2003A driver. So it enables the low voltage and low current output of a microcontroller to drive a high current stepper motor. So we will be connecting our port lines to ULN 2003 in 1B, 2B, 3B, 4B. And the output of your ULN2003, which is 1C, 2C, 3C, 4C, will be connected to your stepper motor. And we will provide the motor supply. If the motor is a 36 volt motor, we connect a 36 volt supply to the common terminal of your motor. So for this tutorial, we are going to use a unipolar stepper motor. So here I show a typical circuit which we are going to implement in Proteus 8 Professional. So here in AT89 C51, we are connecting the oscillator circuit with 10 MHz crystal and there is a reset circuit which is connected to your reset pin. So by default, the reset pin will be at logic low. Whenever the switch is closed, the reset operation will take place and we are going to connect port 3.0 to 3.3 to your input of your ULN2003. And the output from your ULN2003 is connected to a unipolar stepper motor. So here you can see it has 6 leads. The two center terminals are the common terminals. So the two common terminals are interconnected and it is given with a power supply. And the other four leads are connected to your ULN. So from microcontroller, 0 will excite a coil. 1 will not excite a coil. Now let us look at the programming part. So here we write two subroutines, one for making the motor to rotate along clockwise direction, another for making the motor to rotate along anti-clockwise direction. So we are going to do a program for four step biphase stepper motor, which means we are going to take four steps, each step is going to be 90 degrees. Four steps in the sense, to have 360 degree rotation, we are going to take 90 degree steps and we are going to excite two coils at a time so that is why it is called as biphase two coils at a time we are going to interface since we are going to use port 3.0 to 3.3 we are going to have the control word like this so now this two coils zero position the port lines will get activated in this for second one these two coils will get excited these two coils the subsequent step these two coils will get excited so these are the control words given to your stepper motor with a delay of one second. So thereby it will start rotating in a clockwise direction. Same way for anti-clockwise, we give the excitation coil in the opposite way. 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. So this will excite the coil movement in anti-clockwise direction. So after writing the two subroutines, we define our main program, first time configuring the port 3 as an output port, then in a while loop, first time calling the subroutine called a stepper clock, after 2 seconds I am going to call the anti-clock, then subsequently again it will go and it will do a clockwise rotation. So it is a very simple program to understand 
the concept of interfacing a stepper motor with AT18 C5 and microcontroller. Now let us look at the circuit. So here in Proteus A Professional, I have built the circuit. So as I said, we are going to use a 10 MHz crystal connected to your XTAL1 and XTAL2 reset circuit and ULM is connected to port 3.0. So after building the circuit, we can create our program in micro C Pro for 8051. So here the same program which I have explained is shown here. This is for clockwise rotation and this subroutine is for anti-clockwise rotation and we are going to write a main program here where we are going to call this subroutine clock and anti-clockwise. So after writing the program, we need to convert the C program into an hexadecimal file. So to do that, press the build button. So build will compile and also it will convert your embedded C program to a hexadecimal file. So now it is got converted. Now let us go to the Pro Proteus 8. Now we have to dump that program into the IC. So right click on the IC, edit properties, select the hexadecimal file. So this is the hexadecimal file which we have created. Here you can see this is an hexadecimal file. So select this IC, import that hexadecimal file to the IC, then select the clock frequency to be 10 MHz. Press OK. So now we have dumped the hexadecimal file onto this microcontroller. Now let us check the logic of our program by pressing the play button. When you press the play button, okay, now it starts moving in clockwise rotation. After clockwise, it will start moving along anti-clockwise rotation. Now you can see it starts moving in anti-clockwise direction. After anti-clockwise, it will start again moving in clockwise direction. And you can see for each step, it takes about 90 degree step angle. So in this tutorial, I have described about on how to interface a stepper motor with AT18C51 microcontroller. Similarly, we can interface a bipolar and universal stepper motor and accordingly we can do the configuration part. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe for more technical work. Thank you.